Recently, I was trying to combine some data in Excel files using Power Query, but there is some problem with the data. So here are the four files that I was trying to combine. Let's just open them and see quickly. So this is the made up data set for Awesome Clinics. As you can see here, these are the columns that I want to combine, but the order of these columns is different. So for example, here I have got NHS ID, first name, last name, email, etc. And here you can see the ordering is different. And here again, it is a different order. And in this one, someone went ahead and hit the diagnosis column. So how do we fix this problem and still combine the data without manually opening all the hundreds of files? While this might appear like a complex problem, Power Query in Excel is capable of ignoring all such differences and still combine the data. So I'm going to show you that first and then I'll show you another set of files where the problem is even more complicated. So in a blank file, I'm going to go to the data ribbon, click on get data from file from folder option. Point to the folder where our files are and then let's click open. This is going to show me all the four workbooks and this is what we need, but we do need to make some adjustments to the data. So I'm going to go to combine and transform the data option and this will ask you show me what you want to get in one file and then I'll do the same process on all the workbooks in that folder. So we want the data out of the data tab, but notice that here the columns have some blank values and some extra rows on the top. So we don't need any of this. So I'll select OK here. This will open up Power Query Editor and then it has already gone ahead and combined all the data, but the problem is still there. So if I go and select, for example, column four, we can see that, for example, in August we have got first name, but further down it will have date wherever that ordering has changed. So this thing is not fixed. We need to adjust something. The adjustment needs to happen in the transform sample file. This is where we, we are telling Power Query how we want to deal with one file. So if I go to transform sample and make some adjustments first, which is we am going to select these two columns and then delete them. We don't need them anyway. Likewise, we don't need the first five rows. Our actual data begins from row number six. So from home, remove rows, remove top five rows. At this point, the data is there with the header in row number one. So we we'll take uh, from home again, use the first row as header option and that will promote the headers and gives you correct data. Let's make a quick note about my Power Query setup here. I have disabled the option that automatically adds the data type conversion in Power Query. So if you have that enabled, you might see some extra data type conversion like change type steps appear in this list. Make sure you delete those because that can create a problem further down. So at this point, we are telling to Power Query that open the Excel file, delete the first two columns, delete the first five rows, and then use the sixth row as the header and get me the data. And once we have taught it what we want out of one file, when I go to the different order page where all my data is combined, it would have done a nice job of combining everything and rearranging the columns. So August NHS ID or name, whatever it is, it will always be the same column, even when it is found all the way somewhere else. What about the hidden column? Even when the column is hidden, if it is still in Excel, it will come here and show up the data. So this is the first problem wherein my files are kind of clean, the data is all there. It's just that the columns are in jumbled order or they're hidden, but I have got a even more serious problem. So here is my second folder. It has the same four files, but now let's see the problem. The problem is the column names do not match. So here I have got columns in the same order, but in this file, this is called first name. And, and in this file, it's called first. And in some other file, it might be called something else. On top of this, in some of the files, we also have an extra column called receipt ID. This doesn't appear in all of them. And then there is a third problem with this file, which is the spreadsheet names are all different. So this is called data here. It's called records here. It's called sheet one here. And there is a data tab, which is actually blank. So how do we deal with this? Again, we open Excel, go to data, get data from file from folder. 
point the folder where the files are and then click OK. It's going to show up all the four files and we will say combine and transform. It will ask you what do you want. So I'm going to point to the records spreadsheet because that's what the first file has and then say this is what we need and click OK. This is going to open the Power Query editor. We were expecting to see all the files, but this has only done for August and then there is some error appearing at the bottom. So how to fix this problem? Because it is trying to look for those extra columns or whatever and then it's getting into the error. So let's go to the transform sample and then see what is happening. All we are doing is going to the file and then navigating to the records spreadsheet. So this is the first problem because the records spreadsheet doesn't exist in all of them. Instead of doing it like this, what we want to do is looking at the file, whatever is the table in the very first row of the file, that's what we want. Because irrespective of what it is called, it will always be the very first tab in the workbook. So at this point, you do need the formula bar in Power Query. This is not scary and it's very easy to enable. Just go to the view ribbon and click on formula bar and that will add this thing to your screen. Once you have that, click on the FX button to add your own steps. And it should simply say source. And instead of source, if I open bracket and then say data, I'm going to get just the data column with the table as a list. We don't want that entire column. We only want the table that belongs to the very first row here. So instead of data, open curly brackets also and then type zero. Zero stands for very first row. And that will give you the table that belongs to the very first spreadsheet of the workbook. So this is a roundabout way of getting that exact data. But now we are no longer relying on the name of the spreadsheet. Now if I go here, I no longer have that error thing. Everything looks green and all the data from July, August, October, September, everything comes up. What about these column headings? So let's go back to the transform sample again. And this time we don't want these column headings. We're going to get rid of that and type our own stuff. So this is where home remove rows, remove top one row. Once that is gone, we can go back to the combined data. And here I can just double click and name these columns myself. If you have just a handful of columns, this is the easy solution. If you have got like 70 columns, typing them by hand is a pain. So in that case, you can also use a special M command to automatically set all the columns to a list that you have in your data set somewhere else. We can see that where the receipt ID is not available, Power Query automatically nulls it so that there is no issues when combining the data. If you want, you can also add any additional transformations at this stage or simply click on close and load to get this data into Excel. I hope you enjoyed that demo. If you want to learn more about Power Query and how to use it in various advanced ways, either in Excel or in Power BI, check out the playlist that is showing up on the screen. I'll catch you there. Bye-bye.